Hello, this is the Flexure Strength of Concrete experiment. Uh, the ASTM designation of this experiment is ASTMC78, Flexure Strength of Concrete using simple beam with third point loading. This is the ASTM designation. The purpose of this experiment is to determine the flexural strength of Portland cement concrete by using a simple beam with third point loading. The significance and use of this experiment, the flexure strength of concrete is a measure of concrete quality. So this is one of the important things actually that we want to know the flexural strength of our uh, concrete uh, specimen. So this test is considered to be one of these uh, 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 ways for ensuring the concrete quality. The apparatus that is going to be used, we are going to use a loading machine capable of applying load at a uniform rate. This is an important issue for us, uniform rate. This is usually you're going to find the UTM machine, universal testing machine in any laboratory. And loading device capable of applying load configuration as shown in the figure 736. So this is this is the figure. Uh, I'm not sure actually. I put it here, but it, maybe it's not 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 mentioned here. Uh, let me check. Anyway, I will show it this figure shortly. So this is the uh, figure 736. Actually, it is the apparatus. This is the title of it, which is the apparatus for flexural test of concrete by third point loading method. And this is taken actually from ASTM C78 figure one. And as you can see here in the figure, this is the head of the testing machine. This is the steel ball. And this is the like the supports of our uh, our specimen. The span length, if it's ill, then the loading is going to divide our span length into three equal parts, L over three each. And here, this is the bed of the testing machine. This is the, as we said, the loading applied, and this is the support blocks here. The height of the specimen should be equal or should equal to L over 3, which is the depth of the specimen, should equal to L over 3. And the distance between the support and the end of the specimen should be at least 1 inch minimum. Okay, this is the most important, like, uh, the, the figure or the most important uh, issues regarding the figure that is uh, describing this experiment. Let's go back again to our apparatus from our experiment. Uh, so after like making the configuration of the experiment as shown in this figure, forces applied to the beam shall be perpendicular to the face of the specimen and, uh, and applied without eccentricity. This is very important. This is extremely important. Be sure that whenever that you put the loading, the loading itself should be always perpendicular. So avoid any kind of eccentricity or inclination of the of the point loads here or here. So it's something that is very important. Uh, the contact between the steel ball and the top of the uh, of the specimen should be always perpendicular. Similarly, also here at the supports, you need to ensure that they are perpendicular to the face of the specimen from the bottom. Okay. Now let's go to the test specimens itself. The standard ASTM specimen dimensions are 152 millimeter by 152 millimeter, which is six by six inches, in cross section and a length of not less than 508 millimeter, which is 20 inch, for a maximum aggregate size up to 50 millimeter. So it is related to the maximum aggregate size that is available. Okay, so up to 50 millimeter, which is two inches. The sides of the specimen should be at right angles to its top and bottom. All surfaces in contact with the load applying and support blocks should be smooth and free of scars. That is very important. You need to ensure this, uh, the smoothness and uh, any scars on the, on the surface of the specimen before the application of the load or before the starting of the experiment. 
and avoid any kind of scars, holes, indentations, or inscribed uh, uh, identification. Okay, identifications. So this is an important for the test specimen itself, the dimensions, and try to ensure that it's free of all of these kinds of defects. <clears throat> Let's go to the test procedure now. We have like four main steps. We're going to start with the first step, which is turn the test specimen on its side with respect to its position as molded and center it on the bearing blocks. This is important or at least this is how the ASTM uh, required. That is, we are going to turn the test specimen to its side, okay, with respect to its position as molded. So whenever that it was molded, or when you molded, mold the, uh, the, the, uh, the specimen itself, then whenever that you retrieve it or release it, put it or turn it uh, on its side. And this would be the position for loading. Center the loading system in relation to the applied force. Bring the load applying blocks in contact with the surface of the specimen at the third points between the supports. This is as shown in this figure. Here, this is the figure that we're going to have. Let's zoom out a little bit. Here, this is as you can see. This is from testing concrete beam and flexural testing machine. As you can see it here, these are the contact loading. This is our specimen. Uh, as we said, we turned it uh, to its side, the, the molded part, it seems here, this is the top surface or maybe the bottom, but here this is the side of it, okay? And then we are ensuring that it is supported uh, on the right position on the supports of the UTM machine, okay? After that, uh, we are, if full contact is not obtained at no load between the specimen and the load applying blocks and the supports so that there is a 25 millimeter one inch or larger gap in excess of 0.1 millimeter, 0.004 inch, uh, grind or cap the contact surface of the specimen or shim with leather strips. So this is important that you need to have the smoothness and the contact to be like, uh, as we said, uh, as it said here, if you have some uh, like gaps or something, then you need to grind, okay, or cap the contact surface of the specimen. And number four, apply the load rapidly up to approximately 50% of the breaking load. This is in the beginning. Thereafter, apply the load continuously at a rate that can, can const, uh, constantly increases the extreme fiber stresses between <clears throat> 860 K Pascal and 1210 K Pascal <coughs> per minute until rupture occurs. So it seems that, or yeah, commonly we have like the 20 or 50 percent of the loading should be in the, can be applied rapidly, and then after that we are going to have a constant rate with the rate indicated here. Let's go to the analysis and results. The last part of our experiment. Take three measurements across each dimension, one at each edge and the center, to the nearest 1.3 millimeter or 0.05 inches to determine the average width, average depth, and line of fracture location of the specimens at the section of fracture. This is important after making or after rupture. And then if the fracture initiates in the tension surface within the middle third, it's important here to distinguish the middle third of the span length, calculate the modulus of rupture as follows. So we are going to follow this equation if the rupture line within or lies in the middle third. R equal to MC over I, which equals to PL over BD squared, where R is the modulus of rupture in megapascal or PSI, PSI, pounds per square inch, or M is the maximum bending moment, which is in Newton per millimeter, and C, which is D over T, half of the depth in millimeter. I, it is the moment of inertia, which equals to BD cubed over 12 millimeter to the power 4. P, the maximum load in Newton. L, span length. B, the average width in millimeter. And D, average depth in millimeter as well. So remember, Will, this equation is used whenever that we are having the middle third, or we have the rupture in the middle third. Well, 
if the surface, if the fracture occurs in the tension surface outside the middle third outside of it, this is important in this case of the span length, by not more than 5% of the span length, calculate the modulus of rupture as follows. So this is the equation that is going to be used in case of the rupture is outside of the middle third. 3PA over BD squared. And where this A is the average distance between line of fracture and the nearest support on the tension surface of the beam in millimeter inches. Remember, it is the average distance, sorry, it is the average distance between line of rapture. So if we have the line of rapture, for example, line of rapture here, and we have the support here. So this is the line of rapture, the average distance between this and the line of support, and the nearest support on the tension surface of the beam in millimeters. If the fracture occurs in tension surface outside the middle third of the span length, by more than 5% of the span length, discard the results of the test. This is an important issue. Then the last part is the uh, report that you are going to do in your assignment. You are going to put all the information, including the specimen, identification number, average width, average depth, span length, maximum applied load, modulus of rupture to nearest 0.03 megapascal, curing history and apparent moisture condition at time of testing, if the specimen or if specimens were calved, grounded, or if leather shims were used, defects in specimens and age of specimens. This ends uh, our, our experiment for the flexure strengths of uh, concrete. I hope that you can uh, understand it, and I hope that you can do it well in tomorrow's experiment. Thank you, and I hope that you can do this experiment well. Bye.